everyone, I'm Eric Marks, a software developer at MetaMask. This is MetaMask Flask. Flask is a canary distribution of MetaMask where we invite developers to try out our latest features before we ship them to production. I'm going to de demonstrate a very special such feature, snaps. Snaps allow you to expand the functionality of MetaMask at runtime. All you have to do is ask the user for permission. The snap I'm going to show uh, is developed by our collaborators at Protocol Labs and Chainsafe. Using this snap, we will add Filecoin support to MetaMask. First, let's unlock the extension. So first off, You'll notice that everything looks pretty much the same. However, uh, if we open settings, you'll see that there is a snaps page. Uh, and so currently we don't have any snaps installed, but let's go ahead and change that. Now this is the Filecoin snap front end. So let's connect to MetaMask. And here is where things start to get interesting. So uh, this is a permission request uh, from the website uh, and it's requesting to uh, communicate with the snap identified by uh, this ID or install it if it hasn't been added to MetaMask yet. And so uh, for, this, for the purposes of this demo, uh, I'm hosting the snap locally, uh, which is why it has this uh, local colon prefix in its ID. However, in the wild, snaps will be installed from NPM. So let's go ahead and hit connect here. So after accepting the uh, confirmation for the website and its permissions, we now get a request to install the snap since it's not installed yet. And here uh, we have the ID of the snap identified as the origin of this request. So uh, as part of installing the snap, uh, it will request the permission that it permissions that it requires uh, in order to operate. And a snap consists of a manifest file, a source code bundle, and an optional logo image, uh, which of course we do not have uh, in this case. So at this point, MetaMask has fetched uh, all of these things uh, from the location specified by the, by the website in its request to install this snap. So let's take a closer look at, this, at these permissions before continuing. First off, uh, we have uh, the permission to access the internet uh, specifically via the fetch API. And so this is your first indication that snaps have very little power by default. And in fact, they don't have any access to any restricted MetaMask APIs whatsoever, except those that you uh, explicitly granted access to. Now, the second uh, permission here is the one to display a confirmation in MetaMask. So in this version of the system, this is the only way that a snap can directly modify the MetaMask UI uh, by itself. Uh, we have uh, many plans to expand that functionality uh, in the future, uh, but uh, this is uh, what we reckon is the minimal uh, component that the snap needs in order to represent uh, sensitive or complex actions to the user. So skipping to the end, we also have a permission to store and manage data on the user's device. Now, this is not secure storage or uh, encrypted storage or anything like that. It's simply to uh, persist whatever data the snap needs to persist between sessions. Uh, finally, we have the key management snaps. So we see one here for test networks and one here for Filecoin. We're not going to worry about uh, this one, but the Filecoin one, uh, that's the permission for the snap to get the key material uh, derived from the secret recovery phrase in this MetaMask instance that the snap needs in order to generate Filecoin addresses and key pairs. And uh, so we're gonna go ahead and request this. Uh, and when we do that, we get a modal. And why do we get a modal? It's because of the key management permission. Uh, because um, it, like this, we are granting the snap access to uh, our, our Filecoin keys. And if the snap is malicious, uh, it can uh, take those keys and run. Uh, so it's really important that you trust any uh, key management snap 
that you install. And uh, we do trust this snap, so we're going to go ahead and approve it. And when we do that, we see that the uh, UI opens up uh, and the snap is currently being executed uh, by MetaMask. And so you see here a Filecoin address and that we are on the Filecoin mainnet. And uh, this is a real uh, Filecoin address um, uh, derived from my secret recovery phrase. Uh, and we also have some actions here that we can, uh, that we can take uh, and a uh, transaction history as well, as well. Now, since I don't have any Filecoin on uh, mainnet with this secret recovery phrase, uh, let's switch to the testnet. And by the time my uh, address is updated here, we see that I have a balance of uh, 100 FIL. And uh, before continuing to play with the snap, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening on that settings page. And so uh, here we see the Filecoin snap and its uh, ID and its version uh, and that it's running. Um, we'll talk more about the status here in a second. Uh, and here, uh, we see that we can toggle whether the snap is enabled or not. And so if we disable it, uh, it stops. And, and so snap status is dependent on snap activity. So we don't start the snaps ourselves, but snaps are started when they receive an incoming request and they have work to do. And MetaMask will turn them off uh, if they've been idle for too long. So they're uh, sort of similar to uh, service workers or uh, Lambda functions on AWS uh, in that respect. But uh, we are going to do more uh, with this snap right now. So let's go ahead and re-enable it and uh, drill down in the settings page. And so here uh, we see this uh, NPM logo. NPM is the, uh, as I said, the, uh, the place where uh, snaps are uh, published in uh, production, so to say, in this version of the system. And if we click here, it'll take us to the NPM page of this snap. Uh, we see again the permissions that we approved for it. Uh, we also see the, connect the sites that the snap is connected to and we can disconnect them if we like. And finally, we can also remove the snap uh, if that's uh, what we want to do. Uh, but uh, we don't want to do that. Uh, instead, we want to go back to the front end. And uh, since I didn't bring any friends to send Filecoin to, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sign a message instead. And when we hit that confirmation, uh, we will see if we go back that the snap is now running again, uh, where it was previously stopped. Uh, and it's running because uh, it got the signature request and is now displaying this custom confirmation to us. And so this custom confirmation, again, it, we identify the origin of the request, which is the snap. Uh, this custom confirmation is populated uh, by the snap uh, and so uh, it's, of course, asking us whether we want to sign the message. Uh, it will be signed with the address, which is the one that we see uh, in the UI. And here is the hexamal, hexadecimal representation, uh, representation uh, of uh, the snaps are awesome message. So we're going to go ahead and approve that. And then we get the results uh, right there in the front end after it was uh, signed uh, in the snap uh, running in MetaMask. And uh, that concludes uh, the Filecoin demo. Uh, by the time you watch this, everything in this video uh, will have launched and you can build your own equivalent snap uh, for any protocol uh, that uses BIP44 to generate keys. Uh, this is only the beginning and we're incredibly excited to continue evolving snaps together uh, with you, the Web3 developer community. Uh, everything you need to get started uh, is in the video description. Happy building and we'll see you again soon.